Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be doing a setup guide for the Trim UI Brick. Now just to give you an idea of what today will be, it's going to be all about the stock operating system on the Trim UI Brick. So we're not going to be talking about custom firmware. That'll be a separate video. I'll do separate one for Crossmix OS whenever that comes out for the Brick because that'll be my custom firmware sort of stock or operating system of choice. But today we're going to focus on getting everybody up and running that maybe it didn't come with an SD card like this one, no SD card. Or maybe it did come with an SD card like this one, but you heard that they are low quality, prone to failure and all that sort of thing. So you want to replace that SD card. We'll be going over both of these and it's all really the same thing, but I'll be going over that and then we'll go over how to add and remove ROMs. We'll go over how to navigate the stock operating system and just maybe any changes that you might want to do. So that'll be today's video, all about stock, how to get you up and running and just ready to start playing some games on these. Now, the first question you're going to ask is, can you just play it right out of the box with the SD card that's inside of it? And the answer is, yeah, you could. This one has it inside of it. You could turn it on, start playing and go on with your life. You don't have to do this next part. However, you should know that the SD cards that are included with these devices are low quality. There's no brand on them. They're just randomly made. They're very prone to failure. It's the first issue that usually happens with any of these devices. And the second issue is the ROMs. A lot of them are junk ROMs. You'll have issues with saving. A lot of times in Pokemon, you just can't save. Have to replace those ROMs. So those are the reasons that why it's the number one thing to do is replace the SD card or replace the ROMs when you get these devices. But if you are somebody that maybe just wants to play with this and you just want to get some tips on how to use stock operating system, skip to the next timestamp after we've set everything up and then we'll go over all of that. However, if you do want to know how to add and remove games to the SD card, then you should probably just continue watching. I'll go over all of that and you can get an idea of how to do so because I do suggest that you replace the SD card and replace the ROMs at some point in the future. But if you don't want to do it today, then that's perfectly fine. Now, one thing I do want to mention, my white brick got delivered in Chinese and I was a little bit confused. The manual does tell you how to do this, but just in case you need a visual ID on how to do this, just use the R1 trigger to, or all run shoulder to go over all the way to the settings. It's the last one. Click the settings cog. Scroll down. You're going to see language and you should see English. And there you go. And now you are all set to go ahead. If you're wondering what size SD card that you should be using, I would highly suggest probably a 128 gigabyte SD card would be fine. 256 at the most, you really won't need anything bigger than that. So the very first thing we are going to do is update the firmware. And there's a very specific reason for that. When you update the firmware, you need a blank SD card to do so. And if you're starting from scratch, then you have a blank SD card right now. So we're going to do it right away to avoid you having to use a second SD card. However, in the future, whenever you do have to update the firmware, you'll need a blank SD card to do this method. Just scroll over using the triggers on the back or the shoulder buttons. And you want to head over to settings and then scroll over again. We're going to go to system. Scroll all the way down and you're going to look for device info. And you want to check this version number right here. Now we want to make sure that, hey, uh, we actually need to do it. So right now we're on 1.0.5, but I can tell you that the latest firmware right now is 1.0.6. So I am behind on this device we should update it. So let's check out how to do that. Go ahead and turn off your brick and then pop the SD card in the PC. Okay, so we're going to jump on the computer now and you are going to need an SD card reader and I'll have one linked in the description. You want a branded one. This is one of the other points of failure for a lot of people. Make sure it's a branded SD card reader and it works. And now what we want to do is format our SD card as FAT32. And we're going to use a program called Rufus to do so. So head to the Rufus website and you can go ahead and download the portable Rufus version. That's all you need for today. With your SD card connected to the PC using a branded SD card reader, open Rufus, make sure that the device is your SD card, should match the same size, change boot selection to non-bootable, make sure that the file system says FAT32 or large FAT32, 
and click start. When that's done, you're going to have a blank FAT32 formatted SD card and we're ready for the next step. You can find this in my description, but we want to go to the Trim UI firmware GitHub. And you want to grab the latest file. It is a firmware underscore brick TG3040. There's a date and it says version 1.06 as of this video. You might see a newer release in the future. So just grab whatever the newest one is, that zip file. Extract the zip and then you want to head inside of it. And you're going to see a file called Trim UI TG3040 AWIMG. Copy that file to the root of your SD card. Go ahead and pop that SD card back into your device. Okay, so with the SD card inserted, what you want to do is hold the volume down button, push the power button until you see the Trim UI brick turn on. There you go. Keep holding the volume down button. Now you see the progress bar, so you can let go of the volume down button and just let it update. It's going to automatically restart when it's done, so you'll know when it's done. When all that's done, go ahead and put the SD card back into your PC. Go ahead and delete the contents of that SD card so that we're ready for the next step. Just select all and delete from the SD card. So what we need to do is set up the SD card. And to do so, you need to head to the Trim UI GitHub to get those files. Now I do have this linked in the description, so don't worry too much. But you wanna to go to the GitHub and I'll have it linked to the releases. And you wanna grab the file that says TG3040 brick SD base package and then a date, whatever the newest one is. As of today, it's November 13th, 2024. But in case there's newer ones in the future, just grab whatever the latest one is. Go ahead and extract that zip file so you'll get a folder with all of those files inside of it. Copy the contents to the root of the SD card. So you should see on the root of your SD card a RetroArch folder, an MUs folder, and so on. The way it looks like on my screen. At this point, we can now add our ROMs and BIOS files. Now, if you're doing this from scratch, then you're going to have to source your own ROMs and BIOS files. And I'll leave a link in the description to a video about that as well as a list of BIOS files that you should have, and that's on my website. But if you are doing this after having the stock SD card, so you have it there and you're like, hey, I'm just doing a whole entire new one, you could theoretically transfer over your ROMs from that SD card and BIOS files to this new one if you want. Remembering again what I said earlier about you're gonna wanna replace all of this stuff. But if you just wanted to do this for today and you just want to use a brand new SD card for today, then you definitely can. And it's pretty simple. You should go into your SD card, set up the exact same way. You're going to see a ROMs folder and inside of that, you're going to see a bunch of system folders. So you could just copy the ROMs folder from your stock SD card to this new one and you'll have a bunch of games to play. And like I said before, you should replace them as you go. For everybody else that is doing this for the first time, it's the exact same setup. Inside of your ROMs folder, you're going to see system folders. Inside of that is where you put your ROMs. So that's all you need to do. Now, if you're wondering where your BIOS files go, it's in the RetroArch folder, then .RetroArch, which you might not see if you don't have hidden files and folders showing in Windows. So just turn that on if you don't see .RetroArch. Then inside of the system folder, and that's where you would put your BIOS files. Now you're gonna need BIOS files for disk-based systems like PlayStation 1 and Sega CD and Sega Saturn, and things like that. Anything that used the CD back then is going to need a BIOS file. So once again, check out my description. I have a list of what you need and where you should put them is right here in the system folder. Okay, so at this point we have the firmware updated. We have our ROMs and BIOS files added and everything is ready to go. We can actually finally start using the device. So when you first start up, you probably will be at one of the different screens, but let's jump over to favorites. And over here in the favorites screen, you can add your favorites, of course, and we'll do that on the ROM screen, but this is where you could find all of your quick games that you want to play. Head over into recents, of course, your most recently played games. So that'll show up here. Even apps will show up here. So you can just scroll right through and just quickly get to whatever you want to play. Head over into games. Now this is the main sort of menu where you'll find all of your games. So if you see here, you have your different systems. If we keep scrolling over, there's Dreamcast and there's NES, which is actually FC, but it is NES and you scroll over and there's Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, all of this stuff. Let's head over into Game Boy Advance. And again, stock operating system, here are some games. I can tell you that 
Pokemon Emerald and Fire Red and all that, we're going to have issues saving. So you're going to want to replace those if you're going to play them. But let's just play a game. So we click one, just push A. There we go. We are now loading up into Pokemon Emerald. So now you can go ahead and just play the game and have some fun and all that sort of thing. If you want, down here at the bottom, you see a menu. That'll bring you here. You could do save. That's a save state, essentially. You could load. There's an advanced menu, net play. Let's go over into the advanced menu, and now it looks like RetroArch. If you're familiar at all with RetroArch, this is what RetroArch looks like. Now, before we do anything in RetroArch, let's head over to the quick menu here, and we're going to go over to quit, and let's back out. Back out again. Let's head over into ports. We'll come back to RetroArch. Ports. Unfortunately, the stock operating system has a bunch of pirated ports here. We are going to talk about that in the review. Don't like that. Head over into apps, and there's a few things that we can talk about here. You could ignore FN key settings. Moonlight, if you want to do streaming, it's available to you. You don't want to be using USB storage or SD formatter. I would not use either of those. Do it the way that I showed you in the beginning. We have RetroArch, which we'll talk about ebook reader and all that sort of thing, but let's go into RetroArch. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to do is scroll over, go to user interface, scroll all the way down to menu. And we're going to change this from XMB to R GUI. Push B, B again, go to configuration file and save current configuration. Now go ahead and click quit and now go right back into RetroArch. There we go. That is much better, easier to read and all of that. So this is RetroArch and you can make some changes if you need to. One of the biggest things that you'll probably want to do is go ahead and do achievements. So go into settings, head over to achievements. You can turn this on. I would turn hardcore mode off and then log in with your username and password. So I'm going to do that right now. Once you've added your username and password to the achievement section, just go right back, go to configuration file and save current configuration. Now, Retro Achievements isn't going to work yet because we actually haven't signed into Wi-Fi yet. We haven't done that. So don't worry, we'll get there. But there is one other thing that we want to do in settings. So head over to settings. I'm going to go to input and we're going to go to hotkeys. And now we want to set some hotkeys up because right now there isn't anything available to you. However, you probably want to have some options. So we're going to go to hotkey enable and I'm going to set it to select. And now what that means is when I push select plus any other button, it's going to do a hotkey and we're going to set up which ones are which. So let's scroll down and we already have menu toggle set up. That was the menu key and then we went to advanced menu. So we don't really need to do that, but we can do quit. And so quit, I want to set it to start. You got to push and hold it. That means when we push select and start, it'll quit out of a game quickly in case you don't want to go through the menu. Now we could also go ahead and set up fast forward. And for fast forward, I'm actually going to set this to R2. Even though it's a little bit difficult to get to, select an R2 will be your fast forward toggle. You don't want to do hold with how this is set up. Just do toggle. It'll be easier. Go ahead and scroll down and we want to do load state. So I'm going to set that to L1. Select an L1 will load our state. Save state is R1. Select an R1 will save our state. And then we can scroll all the way down. There's one other one and that's show FPS. I'm actually going to set that just to A. When we push select and A in a game, it'll show FPS. So let's back out. We made some changes. Let's go to configuration file, save current configuration. Let's quit out. Okay. So now that we did those changes to RetroArch, let's go over into a game. So I'm going to go over into my recents and I'm just going to jump into Super Mario World. Okay, so now if you remember our hotkeys, select an A shows up frame rate at the top. Select an R2, fast forward. So we're fast forwarding right now. Select an R1, saves our state. Select an L1, so I'm just gonna move right down. Loads our state. And select and start, you're gonna have to push it twice to exit a game. That's it, very simple. Let's keep going from apps and we're going to move over into settings and we'll start from the beginning here. So display, if you want to change the brightness, which I do, I want to make it a little bit better. You can change the LEDs. You can play around with some different things here. It all depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I don't really need to change any of this, just brightness. That's all I wanted. Go over into volume. 
You can play around with the volume, background volume, rumble, all that. Wi-Fi, remember, retro achievements, but also, why not? Let's connect to Wi-Fi. Head over and you can go into hotspot and this will turn the trim UI brick into a hotspot. And you don't really need to do that. Bluetooth, if you want to connect any Bluetooth devices to this, you can do that. Themes, if you want to change the different themes that are available, head over. We're going to skip over key map and homepage. Not much you need to see there. System, you could turn off and refresh ROMs. You can set your date and time here. Nothing too crazy, nothing exciting here, but that's kind of it. Now, if you're on this main home screen or anywhere in these tabs, if you push B, you get a little search as well as a little nice little navigation menu to quickly get wherever you need to go. So that's nice and good. It helps you. Okay, so as promised, I said I would show you how to add to favorites, and there's a few other things. If we go into Game Boy, and you'll see your list of games in your Game Boy, if you push X, you're able to change the core that's being used. So Gambate is the default, MGBA is another option. Some other systems will have other options too, so you can just change between cores if you want to, but I would just leave it as default if you don't really need to mess with it. You could also just push the menu button, and you have options here to add to favorites. So I'm just gonna add Donkey Kong Land to favorites. You can go ahead and delete if you wanna remove something. Search, you can search. Picture size, that'll change the thumbnail on the side. So we just made it bigger. Now that won't show up for you most likely. I'm using the stock SD card. If you wanna add thumbnails, it's a lot more involved. It's very difficult to do. I'll leave a link to the description to my written guide. I have instructions on how to do uh, artwork for all of your games. I wouldn't suggest doing it. Uh, if you're going to upgrade to Crossmix OS when that comes out, it'll have a built-in scraper. At that point, it's going to be easier, but for stock OS, I would just assume that none of these have artwork. It's just going to be easier on you, trust me. Otherwise, that's kind of it for the games list. You can see in if we go into uh, Game Boy Advance, if I push X, you'll see MGBA and GPSP. So you have options for cores and all that sort of thing. But otherwise you can just run through, add favorites, and then just check it out over here. And you'll see we have Donkey Kong Land as a favorite. And if you want, you can remove favorite. And there we go. So options, things you can do. And now since we connected to Wi-Fi, let's do one little change. I'm just gonna jump into Super Mario World. And I just wanna make sure that the retro achievements are working. And yeah, there we go. Retro achievements are working, so everything's great. We are basically set up. There is one last thing though I do wanna show you. So remember before how I talked about save states and all of that. So number one, what you wanna do is first thing you should be trying to do is saving in game if you can. So the normal way of saving in a game you want to try that. In Pokemon, it would be pushing start and going to save, and that would get you a save. However, we talked about save states, and that was the select an R1 and then select an L1 to load it. If you go ahead and push menu when you're in a game and you go over to save, you can see records here. So this is just another option if you want to do it. So let's go ahead and we're going to save right there. And what that means now is, let me jump right over here. If we ever want to get back to that, you can go right over here, load, and there's my record. So it's just another way to load, save states, and all of that. It's just another option. So you have a few different options to you. Number one is always try and save in-game when you can. Number two, utilize save states as a backup. Otherwise, that is all I have for you today on setting up your Trim UI brick. It's actually very simple. It shouldn't be too difficult for anybody to do. Once you get it all set up and running, you can just start playing some games and have some fun and enjoy the nice little device. If you run into any problems, any questions, things like that, come and join my Discord. It's probably the best way to get your information. You could try a comment on the video, but that might be a little bit tough. If you want quick and easy help, come join the Discord. It'll be the easiest way to do so. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff and if this guide helped you. It really goes a long way for me. And thank you all for watching and hope you all have a good one.